fans, uh, for the fans, uh, not many in this can understand, uh, this the podcast to show you who I am, uh, Conrad Cushman, the legend in the plans, uh, please listen every day to the showcase, the opinions and knowledge that anyone can tell you, showing you how it is done, proving I am number one, what a legend becomes, this is now my time to show you that I am here, uh, this podcast just to make it loud and clear, uh, by the fans, uh, for the fans, uh, not many who's here can understand uh, everything pro wrestling, it can never be you, listen to the podcast here for the people, the best show that's here, so listen in, let the knowledge begin, the opinion and the lesson, yes. Folks, welcome to Everything Pro Wrestling. Everything Pro Wrestling is a show by the fans, for the fans. I am your host, Conrad Cushman, being joined tonight by Rob. What's going on, people? No Derek in the house tonight, but we are here with our AEW Dynamite Fight for the Fallen Review. Going to go over everything that happened, maybe a little bit more speculation on the CM Punk, Daniel Bryan stuff. So make sure you guys stick around for that. And if you guys are in the chat live, I want to hear your thoughts on the show. Also, if you are in there, don't forget to hit that like button for me and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Uh, and leave me a comment if you watch this after the fact. We greatly appreciate those who watch after the fact. So a comment is appreciated, and I will try to comment back to you as soon as I can. With that being said, let's get to the intro with my boy, Monteezy. Let's get it. All right, what's going on, everybody? Got a lot to talk about when it comes to the show. I appreciate everybody who is in here. Uh, Original Biggie, my man, always the first one in here, saying good evening, everything pro wrestling, good evening, chat. I hope everyone is well. I'll be over on Twitch. That's all right. Spread the word, Obi-Wan. Let someone know we are on Twitch, man. Share the link. Uh, the more the merrier on Twitch. Azan White said, uh, the juicy one, and is Jack Evans fired? I haven't heard anything about Jack Evans being released. Yeah, I don't, we talked about this earlier. I think he might be hurt. He might be injured. I don't know. Not too sure on what is going on with that. Ace, what is going on? Ace said, wow, what an awesome main event. I don't know. If that was someone's first time seeing like one of those uh, death matches, please let a brother know. Because it's definitely uh, something else. Yeah. Something else when it comes to that. Uh, B-Boy Skyline said, holy, this show, OMG, so good. What's going on, B-Boy? Thank you for joining us. BJ in the house. What's going on, BJ? BJ said, Hoovy Juice is coming back to TMC. My brother's favorite cruiserweight was Hooventu Guerrero. That was my main guy, WCW Revenge. Him and Rick Steiner. (laughs) <laughs> no words for the dog face gremlin. Yeah, I would have picked Chucky. Beast, bro. <laughs> I would have picked Chucky. We'll have to fire that up one day, maybe. Oh, yeah. Let's see if we can. Uh... I got it in my basement. Yeah, Dude, I can't find my 64, though. If anyone knows where it is, please help a brother out. If I let you borrow it, tell can't, me. Can't, bro. You got it. <laughs> no, he said it wasn't him. Uh, A said, what's good? Derek is not here, good sir. Derek's probably uh, sad, <laughs> upset right now. Malik Murray said, F juice is coming. <laughs> Uh, DJ Kryptonic, what's going on? Or excuse me, what is that? Crypt? Did I say that right? Kryptonic. Yeah, that's how it's spelled. Yeah, DJ Kryptonic, what's going on, man? Thank you. I apologize for the stumble. It's late. I'm tired. Oh, look at my boy, Jesus. Hey, Leon. What what's good, Jesus? Um, Terrell is also in the house. He says that uh, show was fire. My gosh, the fans couldn't wait to chant CM Punk at the Rampage announcement <laughs> for Chicago. Jeez, yeah. Uh, someone give Jericho a week off after that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, nah, Jericho out to prove something. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Connor, happy birthday, my friend. Happy birthday. Damn, Gotta... I really look like Derek. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so, man. Chad also in the house. Chad Schrader, what is going on? I appreciate you uh, being able to join us. We are doing well, or at least I can say I am. I'm all right. He's all right. Uh, <laughs> Jocelyn in the house. What's going on? I appreciate you with the emojis. Uh, B-Boy Skyline just yelling your New York City style. Uh, the Ace Time. Thank you, Ace Time. 
uh, John L. Jackson. We got a lot of people tonight. I'm trying to make sure we get through all these shout outs to show love always on Twitch. Appreciate it. Uh, oh, and Rob, I got to mess with you. A few weeks ago, I said Brian Danielson could be coming to AW. You said he ain't going nowhere. Yeah, well, I did. Well, I did. Well. I did. I did. Let me cut you an old slice of what we call humble pie. <laughs> it's all right. Good. Hey, listen, I'm not. I'm happy. So I ain't mad. Me either. I just think it's dope. You don't answer face. <laughs> <laughs> That will not be the only quote tonight from Rob. Uh, Hoovy, uh, Hoovy, I think it's supposed to be Hoovy Two Guerrero saying that Chris Jericho, I'm coming for you, <laughs> sucker. I just saw that. I know, but you have shit in my bag. <laughs> <laughs> Everything pro wrestling. I think Punk and Brian will debut in Chicago if the fans have it their way. I still say Punk debuts in New York City. If not, Punk or Brian debut in New York City. Um, it, I, I don't think you have them going the same night. No, you have to spread these out, I think. Uh, DJ Kryptonic said that was his first death match. I can't wait to hear what you guys think of that. Hoovy and Jericho was one of my favorite feuds. Yeah, Jericho was a was a beef back then. Uh, Jason, what's going on? He says, uh, what is the move Chris Jericho has to do in the next labor? And how many labors to go? He's got one more after this. No, it's always the five labors. MJF's the fifth, I think he said. He said you have to go uh, through the four, then he'll be the last one. So I smell some BS coming. And people are giving Connor happy birthday shout outs and taste humble. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Sonny Bimbo, my wife wants pizza now because of that pizza cutter. That's what we had tonight, actually, too. It's a weird way to get an appetite, but right? shout out to your wife. <laughs> Blood Orange Lemonade, too. Sponsored by Blaze Pizza, by the way. The pizza they, tonight. They, they ain't paying us. You can. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Cardona just beat Nick Gage a week ago. That was also a great match. Uh, I think Brian debuts at Rampage 6, says. Mm, maybe a little misdirection. I can't wait to hear what you guys think of it. Um, Rob, I guess we'll get into this show. We open up tonight early on. I, I won't post the other picture because I don't know if we're allowed to. I'll save that for TikTok. Follow me on TikTok, EPW <laughs> show right now. If you got TikTok, give me a follow. Kind of kind of doing some good things on there. Um, I, I don't know, man. They start off running down the card, but we get into... The match that I thought would have been the main event of the show, it was uh, the big 10-man elimination tag. We had the Elite versus Hangman Page and the Dark Order. Um, Rob, I guess I'll let you talk about how the Hangman and the Dark Order had their team entrance. Well, I wasn't expecting this to open the show, but you knew this was going to be a great opener. Facts. Um, Hangman, because they get this video package for Hangman about the cowboy life and cowboy shiznit. <laughs> and... How you could be from any walk of life and still have that cowboy lifestyle. I did like that video package. And when they came out, they had um, lights going off and they had each individual member of the Dark Order under a strobe light. And then right in the center, they had a uh, hangman page come out. And they all had matching attire with matching purple bandanas looking like some ballers out of San Andreas. I wasn't too happy because I'm actually playing San Andreas right now, trying to platinum it. And it's Grove Street over here, man, because this is Grove Street. <laughs> Home. Home. At least it was, so I fucked everything up. <laughs> Yo, classic. It's cra- You know what's crazy? That uh, I have a family member that lives near a street called Grove Street, <laughs> and I say that every time I walk by. After this, though, we have the Elite Squad coming out, and I said the Elite Squad on purpose because they are dressed like they are part of Space Jam. They are dressed <laughs> like the Toon Squad, and this was a great way to get some good promotion in for the new Space Jam movie by LeBron James. I haven't seen it yet. So I can't speak to it. Oh, I can't even quote it to you then. There was a line in there about TNT. Go ahead. You can I'll, I'll yeah, watch it eventually. I know the premise of the movie pretty much. Yeah, Bugs Bunny knows who I am. Sure, we got TNT down here. <laughs> see? See? So that means, in essence, the Looney Tunes watch AEW. I like it. I like it. I, I almost went on a little cornet rant, but I won't do that. <laughs> um God but damn it. <laughs> This wasn't bad. They came out. Everybody looked pretty cool for the most part. They had um, the special sneakers on. uh, They had the Space Jam 11s with the 45 on the back. Facts. But Don Callis, these shorts, bro. These shorts were short. (laughs) There's only been a few wrestlers that can pull up the short shorts. Shawn Michaels and now Don Callis. Iron Anderson. (laughs) And Brock Anderson. Stone Cold. Yeah, yeah, Austin. Let's not... Let's not not 
glorify so many short shorts right now. Let's keep it going. <laughs> they weren't Daisy Dukes. <laughs> Daisy Dukes. But th they came out. Don Callis is rocking the short shorts. Absolutely ridiculous. And I loved every moment of this. He is a heel, damn it. He is a heel. They uh, okay. <laughs> Somebody's called Don Callis. They say he looks like a penis in a suit, right? Yeah. So they started calling him Don Thales. <laughs> <laughs> uh the first plug was free and attention the next spot the next ad spot's gonna uh coach you cost you yep. bj mm -hmm. listen man as long as they're paying i don't care uh the elite's intro was hilarious people are saying uh dj kryptonic says that he loved the dark orders entrance i agree uh it was the wild west of the dark order versus the tune squad of the elite are you ready for this yeah i'm ready for this <laughs> <laughs> good call terrell good call yeah, I, I thought this was really great how they set it up. Uh, the match, there's so much happening in this. It's a 10-man tag. You can't write down every single note about this. Carl Anderson gets the first pinfall on Alex Reynolds for a roll-up handful of trunks because he's a dirty, dirty heel. Uh, after that, Anderson is immediately penned with the Dark Order's fatality. I thought that was great. Stu Grayson might be the unsung hero of this match. I don't oh, know. Yeah. He, he, he did some amazing stuff, and I hope that he's okay. Because he took a couple nasty falls in this. Yeah, he did the dive after that, after he banged his leg. So I don't care. That joint looked like it hurt still. I, I wouldn't be taking any bumps like that. Um, afterwards, Stu Grayson and Doc Gallows both get counted out. And then we have Evil Uno jumping into the ring with Kenny Omega when it's three on three. So we have Evil Uno, John Silver, and Hangman Page versus basically the Elite on the other side. Um, one wing and angel to Evil Uno because, yeah, because he's Kenny Omega. By God. Two on three. John Silver comes in. John Silver may have one of the best comebacks in all of this. Rob was talking about it that he loved when him and Reynolds were like on that roll with each other. Oh, though they're back and forth as a tag team when they hit that one, two, three, four. It's like an eight spot. Yeah, it's crazy. Absolutely good. I love it on Fire Pro. Someone like made their double team moves. Mm -hmm. Pretty fire, man. Um, so afterwards, John Silver's on the outside. He gets cut off for his uh, fiery comeback, and they do a spot. They set up for a Meltzer driver, and Nick Jackson requested basketball. If you're not watching BTE, you may not get this joke, but he's supposed trick to Trick shot Nick Jackson. Trick shot Nick Jackson. And this is the first time he misses a trick shot because he goes for the Meltzer driver as he tries to dunk the ball, and the ball actually bounces out of the hoop, but he still lands the Meltzer driver. And then he dunks it afterwards and said, that's what was supposed <laughs> to happen. I laughed. Uh, really good stuff there. And – he gets in the ring and uh, he gets the BTE trigger. John Silver's gone. It's three on one. This is Shawn Michaels Survivor Series 03 booking, in my opinion. They knew what they were doing here, and I was just hurt. The last outlaw. Uh, Kenny Omega and Paige finally face off. Kenny spit in his face. I hate spit. I hate it so bad. In this day and age, but anytime. It's, uh... Yeah. Uh, we see a triple super kick, and Hangman Page's mouth gets bloody from it. This has to be in the video package when they face off. I know everybody knows what happened in this. I'm going to explain to you why it's not a bad thing in a second. Uh, afterwards, Buckshot Lariat eventually gets hit on Matt and Nick Jackson, but Matt Jackson gets pinned for the one, two, three. It is now down to two on one. Kenny Omega and Nick Jackson versus Hangman Page. He goes for another buckshot Larry, but Nick Jackson holds his foot, reminiscent of when he did it to them. Mm -hmm. And after that happens, uh, or wait, I jumped ahead. Kenny got hit with the dead eye for a near fall, which everybody believed Hangman Page was going to get that pen. Uh, he goes for it. Nick Jackson grabs the foot, leads to a shot with the title belt. You said it was the impact? No, he first tried to hit him with the tag team title. The referee took that away. Then he grabbed the uh, AEW championship. More weight to it. And he uh, hits him right across the head. And after that leads to the one wing angel. And nobody kicks one, out of the one wing angel. Two, three. That damn one winged angel catches you every time. One wing, damn it. One mm -hmm. wing. One winged. <laughs> um, yeah, dude. So sad to see Hangman Page lose. But don't get down in the dumps just yet. I still think that there's hope that he's going to eventually get this title shot. When is the right time, Rob, in your opinion? See, I thought it was too early for him to be getting in now, so I did think they were gonna lose this match coming into this. Right. Um, I think all outs too early. What's the 
<laughs> that is me if I was a pro wrestler. Yeah. <laughs> One bump general. What's the show in November? Full gear. Yeah. Wasn't that kind of named after Hangman with the whole BT thing? It was like you're not full gear ready. Yeah. With, I can see maybe full gear, if not full gear, revolution. Yeah, it's got to be one of those two shows. So you can't wait breaks. too. You can't wait too long though, because you do run the risk of uh, cooling Hangman off, Hangman off. I think you you might put him in the the lane of depression for a little bit now though. They he might be the guy it. to beat Miro. But yeah, I mean, I'm saying temporarily. Then that way you could have Kenny just cost him. You could do a bunch of different things yeah, with this. We got to see where they go because he did lose his title shot with this. When he does, I don't know if he how far he falls in the rankings, but he's gonna have to build himself back up. Yeah, I'm trying to think of who number two is now. Is it still Jungle Boy? It might be. Um, Orange Cassidy? Maybe. Or Darby? Darby and Kenny would be fire. Uh, love both entrances from both teams. Jesus says, Motor City, City Machine Guns do a barrage of moves very well, too. Sick, that is a excellent point. Queen of the Indies, Tiff from the All Elite Podcast in the house. Yeah. Tiff, the main event, I was thinking of you every moment of it. I can't wait to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, bro, I couldn't be a wrestler. Spit in my face is going to turn into a shoot real quick. CJ knows how I feel about spit. That is a fact. Uh, I feel like Adam Page versus Kenny Omega at full gear. I think they're going with that. Nobody kicks out of that. Yeah, I love protected moves in wrestling. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Kota Ibushi's like, what the fuck, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Kenny versus Christina at All Out. Maybe Christian. Christian. Uh, didn't Okada kick out of the one wing angel before? Yes, but we don't talk about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yes, that did happen. Uh, here comes the slow separation of Hangman and the Dark Order. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, yes, it's Jungle Boy, then it's Christian after that. Mm, so that might lead to a number one contender match. They say Christian is number three in the ratings. People know. Yeah, they're probably going to have to have a title eliminator. And <laughs> Tiff said she was screaming a lot at the main event. As you can see in her picture there, I don't know if you guys can see the mouse, but... She has light tubes in her right hand in the picture. So. I just wonder how many times she yelled out MDK. <laughs> she knows. She, she's been attending all the events and doing interviews. So if you guys want the latest and greatest in that, watch her on Under the Ropes, Indie Talks. She's got it all for you. And not just because we know her. She's actually really good, too. So Damn right. Shout uh, out to Tim. BJ said it's going to be one of those painful and long breakups. <laughs> um, just move on. <laughs> Let's keep it moving here with um, Death Triangle. They're supposed to be doing an interview, but there's no Lucha Bros here. They got their rental car canceled. Who could do that? What is the problem at the airport? Something must have went wrong. That bastard Chavo Guerrero shows up, and he's there with Andrade, and they kind of just taunt Pack a little bit. This is leading to a big match between these two, and I think it could be a fire That's match. be a banger. Yeah, dude. Pac is probably one of the most unsung heroes. I wouldn't mind seeing him and Omega go at it once again. Pac, someone who I would put the title on when you don't know what else to do, call Pac. He knows what to do. Um, but I look forward to this feud coming up as well. Rob, I'm going to let you kind of take over the uh, the Ricky Stark celebration. I don't think you need this, right? Nah. So Taz is up on some sort of platform. Uh, I forgot what it said. It's like a uh, team tag. What was the little hate the tag line under it? I forgot, but FTW. I don't remember. So he introduces Ricky Starks, who comes out accompanied by Hook. No Will Hobbs to be found. And there's some brass band out of nowhere. I don't even. I didn't even see them come down. They didn't need to. But they're, they're Nolans. You got the trombones and the. The brass section, let's say, I can even talk right now. Section, br brass section. Listen, you were just mad they didn't make that rusty tr uh, trombone joke. <laughs> you were waiting for it. Oh, they made some sort of joke. They said, oh, trombones have no business in wrestling. Like Xavier Woods, they made millions of dollars with one, so whatever. <laughs> right? Ace Time said, imagine Sting and Omega in a match. I can see it happening in the future. No. B Tazzy in the house. Chad giving you a shout out. Tokyo said, oh, Chavo. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. They should have played that. <laughs> that would have got people hype. Johnny Hungy. Uh oh, I see people. Do we have to say it for Derek? <laughs> I guess. Shout out to my boy Ricky. Spanish. <laughs> every time. Every time. I feel like Chavo Girl is going to turn on Andrade. Never trust a Guerrero. Damn it. <laughs> Uh, Terrell says, I think Andrade and Chavo are setting up the uh, AAA entering the war against AEW and Impact. I keep telling people there's an invasion storyline building. I, I don't think you need to invade. 
I think I just like the matchups. When's that match coming up with uh, Andrade and um, Omega at Triple Mania? <laughs> Yo. Uh, in August. I believe August. If, it, if it's not that SummerSlam weekend, it's the weekend after, I think. Uh, best in the world. I've seen people write. No lie. I thought that Trombo was going up someone's ass. <laughs> I thought I was going on Ricky. Uh, oh. Brass Band is awesome. Uh, this is someone from New Orleans. Yeah, shout out to Original Biggie from New Orleans. Azan said August 14th. Thank you, Azan, for clarifying that. week before. Big facts, big facts. So Okay, so Ricky's in the ring. How he overcame the odds and how they cut dead weight with uh, losing Brian Cage. I'm a machine. <laughs> Started out with too much cargo, so we had to give it a Benedict Arnold. <laughs> Shout out to NWA. <laughs> I should have worn my NWA shirt. <laughs> Freaking um, dude. So Cage comes out and basically chases off him and Hook. Why did the band have to get beat up? Like Cage just <laughs> wrecked dudes who were just there to play music. Yo, the dude with the drum, man, he broke that over his head. I swear he jerked it back. <laughs> like I thought his my neck. My neck. Was... <laughs> yeah, bro. That's all I said instantly. My neck, because I have. A bad neck. If you guys ever see me always doing that, it's because of my neck problems. And I'm just like, dude, never, man. Never would I want to do that. And then we cut to a break after this. You know, you're kind of like down, like, oh, we haven't even got to the second match yet. And then we find out who is coming over. It's New Japan Pro Wrestling's Master of the Century, Hiroshi Tanahashi. Go Ace. Go Ace, bro. I lost my shit. So Hiroshi Tanahashi has challenged whomever is the winner of the IWGP US title match. At this point, I don't give a damn. I don't give a rat's ass who wins this match. (laughs) We got Tanahashi coming over, bro. He is a New Japan Pro Wrestling legend. Icon. Legend. Ace. He is the man. But... Sorry to burst it a little bit. He bursted this. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> He's not coming over here. Apparently, whoever the IWGP US champion is going over there. I don't care. He showed up on my television screen. I was happy. Um, Let me see here. Wait. <sighs> Who? That band got laid out. Admin delete Tony's comment. Who? Who is Tony? Am I missing something? That band got laid out. Positively, E, that was fire. Go, Ace, Lance Archer coming from New Japan. That might be on. I don't see any comment, Jocelyn. I don't know if you're playing or if somebody. You let me know if somebody's acting up. Somebody's cutting up. Don't don't make me have to take out the band hammer, all right? <laughs> I don't have to time nobody out. But, um, dude, I'm real happy to see him come in. New Japan Pro Wrestling legend. Like, if you don't know, Hiroshi Tanahashi probably saved New Japan Pro Wrestling. Um, many probably don't see it that way, but legend, I'm so happy that, yeah. that he's around now. And I would love to see him in like a main event match or a mid card match with somebody and could really help make some new people over here. Um, <laughs> what is going on in this chat, bro? This was fire. He said, BJ said he's not coming over. Well, I think this is leading to it eventually once things get better over there. Now, the next person I want to see come over here is the murder grandpa. I don't care. Get my man Minro Suzuki, man. <laughs> Sorry, was eating cheese puffs. <laughs> Hold on, what do we miss? <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of randomness going on in the chat right now. How old is the ace? 45? 45? I, yeah, I was going to say that. Uh, that Enokio ism he did uh, the poison thing before Vince and the NWO. Yeah. We won't bring up the Enoki times. Rob knows. I used to watch back then. Don't you ever say I'm not a fan of New Japan. I was watching when Bob Sapp was up in there dancing. Best entrance in the game. Let's get into the next match. We have a tag team match with FTR uh, versus Tully Blanchard with Santana and Ortiz. Why do we not call them by their tag name? Well, Proud and Powerful. Yeah, why don't we ever call them that? It's pissing me off. And they got Conan in their corner. Uh, tag team action was all over the place in this one. We had that strange, weird, like, pinfall count and. I don't know what's up with the referees lately. Like, listen. I don't know if that was the referee's fault. It was more of a miscommunication on everybody. Yeah. Listen, fuck that. At the end of the day, we need to know what's going on with these things. And, Tony, if I'm you, I'm telling people from now on, like, yo, don't pull your counts. 
if they don't kick out, you didn't want to win. Too bad. Call it as a shoot. Yeah, because I'm I don't know. I'm sick of that. That's starting to piss me off where it's like these weird moments sometimes. Um, if somebody saw something, please let me know. Oh, Tokyo and B Boy Skyline, don't use my ish. Yes, guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh AW it's coming for you guys. Me. Yeah, don't no stealing alliance. Uh, Proud and Powerful was in the uh, <laughs> piece. I like that. Uh, Brian Coleman said, what's good, Conrad? I can't stay, but I wanted to stop by and show some support. That's what I appreciate, Brian Coleman. Thank you very much, good sir. I appreciate you as well. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Uh, let your YouTube, YouTube channel <laughs> yeah. created Ricky, Conrad. It was Jocelyn, 100%. Uh, the ref is smoking that good stuff. Malik said, uh, Conrad isn't with the uh, with the shoot refs. I'm just saying, man. Like you can't you can't pull back the counts. But in this match, I, there was a scary moment, bro, where Cash Wheeler got a nasty cut. I saw him crawling over to the doctors and letting them know, like, hey, I think I just got cut on my yeah, hand. It was like deep right right in here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what caught him or what happened, but he was crushing it, like with the tornado DDTs. I saw uh, positively E. Tag me on Twitter saying he wants to see that edited into the AEW games. Uh, e, you may want to send that to uh, Brian Williams or the Ukes team. They'll, I'm sure they'll take good care of that. At Ruby Will. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to my man Brian Williams too, man. Appreciate you, fam. Um, yeah, so Wheeler's getting his arm checked out. Dax Hardwood hits a brain buster on Ortiz for the three count, but it ended weird. I don't know if that was supposed to be the end. It was probably supposed to be the, uh, the, the Shatter Machine or something, but... Yeah, they probably had to just call it audible. I don't know, yeah, man. It's like he was, his arm was gushing. Chad says, "Bring back AW, bring back the LAX name for Ortiz and uh, his partner, please." They will not do that because there is a new LAX, Danny Limelight and Slice Boogie with Conan and MLW. Danny Limelight's got a new name, right? Yes, they changed it, but I can't recall what it is because I just watched it Rivera? over the weekend. Maybe I can't remember what he changed his name to. I think Slice Boogie might have changed his name too. It might just be Slice now or something crazy. Uh, Cody should know. Let those refs f on them. <laughs> <laughs> that Where's that him. referee? He was trying to fuck on me. Hey, Ted DiBiase said he did not say that. He, he said he might have said it. He, he don't remember. <laughs> I think he did because Cody wouldn't have been laughing that hard about it. Uh, also, some are thinking that it wasn't a slice but a snack so hard it caused a break. I can't tell from the angles that I've watched. Who knows? LAX, uh, Rivera, yep. Azan, Azan is on his shit, bro. Uh, PNP suffer another loss. I'm not too worried about this. They look good in defeat. And Santana, man, we gotta talk about Santana for a minute. Go ahead, bro. He's got something. You were the one who told and me about it, and I've noticed ever since a while you said ago, it. like. I don't want to see them break up, but I can see Santana going on this great mid upper mid card singles run. I can see him maybe beating Nero or somebody for that uh, TNT title one of these days. Yeah, dude, Santana's been delivering, but I still think this LAX and FTR feud's not done yet. Oh no, I think you could have Conan and Tully get into this a little bit too, and you could have this big uh, street fight blow off at All Out, and I think a Chicago street fight is the way to end this feud. Put all your put your rank on the line, put everything on the line. And I think that would be a great way. What and about a New York City street fight? Not yet. Not yet. You know why? Because BJ said what I think is gonna happen. P and P are winning those tag belts in New York City. That is my call, and I still will stand by that as well. Uh also, yes, yeah, Santana is the Michaels of the team. Come on with the Marty and Sean. I like Marty Janetti carried the Rockers, and I will die on that hill. <laughs> I am not going to get into this. I'm going to let it slide for right now because I can't let people talk bad about my boy, Sean. I'm not talking bad about Sean. I'm just stating facts. After this, Dr. Britt Baker uh, is going to bring someone in to watch her back, but she's still trying to play heel. Who is going to be Britt Baker's bodyguard? Her heater. I don't know. You said you had a suggestion. Who did you I think? suggested Nevaeh from uh, Impact Wrestling, who was recently let go, or... Contract expired or whatever. Yeah. I don't think she's too busy. Maybe Allison K. Could somebody be. from NWA. Shout out to uh oh, I just skipped it. Shout out to BJ. It's your daddy carried them through that window. <laughs> that much is true. Facts. Uh P and P better win the tag team championships, damn it. I think patience is a virtue with this company, Malik. Patience. 
It'll come. Maybe Camille is on set. I don't know if she can pull double duty. Nick Nick Aldis ain't playing that. People are saying Tessa. People need to shut the hell up. <laughs> yeah, I'm not feeling that. Uh, yeah, get them, Sean. <laughs> Got a lot of uh, HBK fans in the house, man. I'm glad that you guys are really feeling the uh, Santana and Ortiz tag team that they don't call proud and powerful. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think this feud is not done, and we've got more good things coming up for it. Britt Baker is still trying to be a heel at the same time with all this, and I think the fans are starting to turn her. I think it's going to be inevitable. Let's see if it continues, but I, I like her as a heel better. She's a much better heel. I agree. She um, should play like a rock type character, where she just goes by however the reaction is. Maybe. Yeah, this is true. This is true. We find out Tony Khan's big live announcement. I don't have a graphic for that, but we find out a, on behalf of Tony Khan. On behalf of Tony <laughs> Khan, Tony Schiavone is out there, and they are talking about AEW Rampage on the twentieth. Robert, where are they going to be? Shy Town, baby. <laughs> The big shy, and they're going to be in the United Center having their show. Um, it's looking great. I, I don't know, man. Like, I thought they really did a good job with the setup for all of this, uh, how they were doing it. So, August 20th, United Center, and they're calling it AW Rampage, the first dance playoff of Michael Jordan, the last dance. If you guys have not seen that doc and you're a basketball fan, you're missing out. It is phenomenal. I, I mean, all day, bro. Like, really, really good. I would recommend anybody go to see that. Um, afterwards, though, Rob, what chance broke out? I'm sure you know. <laughs> CM Punk! CM Punk! The fans went absolutely nuts chanting his name. <laughs> they teased this all night, too. There's, there was like, I counted three instances that I can recall right now. Listen, all I know is when he shows up, it's going to be a party. Shout out to Tazzy in the chat. <laughs> People are going to be going nuts for him. And I know when it happens, I'm going to be cheering, going crazy. It's just going to happen. And it's going to go down perfectly. Oh, my God. <laughs> I I'm just happy for it, man. It's just got to be that I'm way. Happy. CM Punk is probably my second favorite wrestler of all time, personal favorite. Um, always loved him. I swear, one day you guys will hear the rant of rants of why I was so pissed with what WWE did to him, and they embarrassed me at a pay per view show. I'll I'll get to those <laughs> yeah. stories one day. You were there for that one, mm -hmm. right, bro? I think that might have been top five ever at Madness I've ever been at a wrestling event. It might be number one. Oh, I see Jocelyn suggested uh, Heidi Lovelace. I can see that. Uh, or Ruby Soho. That's the new name. Uh, Conrad Britt Baker is a peach. Tazzy will be next for the peaches because <laughs> it should be LAX. Uh, I don't want Tessa. Went from a fan to a foe so fast with her. I only want to hear Blanchard when I think of Tully. <laughs> Damn. Uh, the night This is Nitro after Montreal Screwdrop level nonsense at this point. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Derek, what's going on? See, Derek's in the chat, everybody. Let Derek know what up. You had a lot of people asking about you, Derek. Yeah, they think we look alike for some reason. I agree. <laughs> too much too much controversy. Uh, six, am I tripping, or did they try to edit out the CM Punk chance? No, they, they were letting them in. I don't think Punk debuts next week. No, me either. No, no. But after that, Darby Allen transitions into the next part of this. And, and This is instance number two. This is all you, Rob. Take it. What do you say? Um... I've been around the world, a lot of places, and a lot of people say that they're the, they're the best. And there's one place you can prove that, and that's right here in AEW, even if you're the best in the world. Look in my <laughs> eyes. But that was that was it, man. They they really tried to push it there. And I thought I thought that was cute. Cute, cute, cute. little <laughs> promo. You I, you know what I'm saying, little Yeah. I can't well, tell you cheek. Yeah. The apple of my eye, <laughs> like they were, they were doing well with it. Um, then we move on to the next matchup. Hold on, I'm gonna let people. Some people talk. Do we talk about the punk thing now? And Brian, is no. this a good place to save it? Stick around till the end. That's what we call a teaser to make people wait for it. But we'll talk about that at the end. Um, th trust me, there's not a lot of notes for this. Next up, we have the IWGP US title. We had Lance Archer versus. 
Hikuleo, Rob's boy. And unfortunately, Jake the Snake was not here for this matchup. But you know who was? My boy, Haku, the baddest man ever in a fight. If you ask me what wrestler am I taking in his prime, I don't think you guys know. I'm dead fucking serious. I am taking Haku 10 out of 10. And Rob knows why. Haku was my inspiration in high school. <laughs> I used to do the Tongan death grip on people. <laughs> and t- man, as soon as you heard the boo, 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 <laughs> you knew it was over. Crushing it. Um, but it felt good to see Haku coming out in the Bullet Club shirt. Like, pay respect to that dude, man. That dude's a badass, period. Oh, and awesome as King Haku. I don't know about all no that. Man. I thought that could be leading to some trouble. Um, but for sure, <laughs> B-Boy said, save that rant. You want to be here for it? <laughs> <laughs> a question brought up in the chat earlier. If these rumors aren't actually true, should AEW shoot them down or ride the wave? Ride the wave is getting more eyes on the product. <laughs> Sick. You not tripping. They were trying to edit them out. I don't think they were. I it's think they wanted them. Yeah. Uh, Punk and Colt reunited. There's a lot to talk about with that, too. Uh, we got them G.O.D.'s. We got G.O.D.'s old theme. Hell, yeah. <laughs> I like the new one better, but I didn't mind hearing the old one. I do like the new one better. Do, 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 with the masks. Um, Derek nobody really. Love. No, my brother. <laughs> uh, King Haku. Damn, man, I need to buy a Bullet Club shirt. Facts, man. Everybody's got to have one of those, I feel like. Hook it up, sick. Hook it up, man. Pro Wrestling Tees. Or if you need one that's comparable, you can always go to our site down below, T Public, and get yourself a nice everything pro wrestling shirt. If you want new merch, yell at this guy. I know it's all. We're waiting. We're waiting. Yeah. So after all of this happens, uh, it's it's a it's a solid match. Were you impressed with uh, Hikaleu's performance in this? Uh- I've seen his growth, not his physical growth, but his actual. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he's already tall as hell. Uh, was he six eight, six nine, something mm-hmm. like that? Taller than Archer. Yeah, yeah, it's a big boy. But seeing his um, how he's matured in the ring over the years. So we used to watch him in those opening six man tags and eight man tags at the New Japan shows. Green. Not gonna lie, he was kind of garbage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he he's getting there. He's getting there. And I think with time, we're starting to see some of the guys in New Japan who've been around a while mm-hmm. move up. But he's he, definitely got a lot better. Yeah, Archer hits a big superplex on him and lands the blackout for the three count. Archer wins. So Archer Hiroshi Tanahashi is oh, happening. Wait, wait, wait. You gotta skip over the tongue and death grip. <laughs> oh, yeah, there was a tongue and death grip. <laughs> Take it out to the outside. Time out. No, this is another rant. It happened during what time, though, Rob? Oh, yeah. Picture and picture, fucking picture. picture. Fuck picture and picture. I am so goddamn sick of it. Like, this picture-in-picture shit, it can go. Like, right now. (laughs) That shit can go. Because you can't keep doing picture-in-picture during good spots in this. And this isn't even the worst defense tonight. This isn't the worst I don't know. I think this match did suffer the most from the picture-in-picture because a lot of the spots did happen during that. I think the main event suffered from it. I won't even bring it up then. And here comes Derek with that Ricky Spanish. Cut it out. Tanahashi is next up for Lance Archer. Lance Archer is on the way to Japan to defend that title. I can't wait to see what happens with that. Um, Japan just put on a really good show recently, too. If you guys aren't subscribed to New Japan World, this is free as well because I like the shit. I recommend it. Thanks. (laughs) So um, during this, afterwards, Rob has a great uh, quote from MC Search. Told you we weren't done with the rap quotes for tonight. (laughs) So... The great 20th century poet M.C. Search once was quoted saying, Black cats are bad luck. Bad guys wear black. But it must have been a white guy that started all of that. It gets the gas face. Cody Rhodes is trying to be interviewed backstage at the dusty position at Malachi Black. All white. All white, like an angel. And who comes up but Malachi Black. They start fighting each other. And they're dressed in black. (laughs) Going up the ramp. I like this. This is actually working. And they face off, and he takes Cody down. And then here comes some officials out as he kneels down to him, and he says something. What is – is he calling it uh, Malachi's Black Move is the Fade Black – to Black? No, Black House, I think it is, or something. The home of Black. I can't remember. He said something like that. If somebody in the chat heard what he said, please remind me. But that's probably going to be the name of his finisher. And here come officials and Nightmare Family members in jackets. Peep the Fuego. Fuego. Fuego took took a mean kick to the head. 
But he was wearing that Nightmare Family jacket. By Hashtag the, sign Fuego. By the way, if anyone wants to make a gift of me doing it, this is the Fuego podcast right here. Show my man Fuego some love. Fuego ends up eating that shit. Like, he probably took the second best one. Arn Anderson, nothing's going to beat the mic flip. <laughs> Arn took that shit like a G. But the only one he didn't deserve. <laughs> it was still great. Yeah. Fuego goes down for the count in his Nightmare Family jacket and... We then find out next week Miro's defending the TNT Championship against Big Shotty Lee. Not just Miro, God's favorite champion. With all due respect, sir, I apologize. <laughs> but, yes, Miro is defending that. Lee Johnson is the challenger. Can Lee get the job done? <laughs> what do you say? He blessed me with God-given strength and a double-jointed wife. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love this uh, superiority complex. Yeah. Yes, it is. It is going great. Uh, six. I like the picture picture, but they need to know, uh, know when to save the big spots for the end of the commercials. Maybe you think they need to plan it out more, more so like, okay, now we're going to do picture in picture. I think they need to give the wrestlers a warning. I think he needs a different production crew. He's not trying to do anything on himself. Who? Tony Khan. It's not them. I mean, he hired people. I think the production crew, I, this could be something that could be worked out. We'll see. Hopefully it gets better. Uh, Black Mass, A says, um, somebody just had it. I think it was Welcome BJ. to the House of Black. House of Black. Thank you. Oh, BJ put that up. Thank you, BJ. Credit to you. Uh, Fuego Del Sol. Jocelyn, I feel you on that. I was sad, too. Laugh out loud. Cody actually lives in the House of Black. <laughs> Facts. I was thinking, does that mean Luchasaurus is going to stop using the roundhouse kick now that Black's in AW? I think AW doesn't give a shit about that stuff as much as other companies. Just saying. <laughs> but they probably should. Mark Henry's going to get someone's ass about that. Like, I, I almost guarantee it. Now, you know that's his move. Don't be doing that shit. It's probably going to come up with uh, Andrade hits that uh, spinning elbow. <laughs> Madness came in here and said, Flavor, Flay. <laughs> Wow, you smell like chicken, girl. Flavor of Flav gets the gas face. <laughs> Flavor of Love, classic. So when is Cody versus Black happening, Malik? Well, that's next week on, uh, what is that, AEW Homecoming. Is every AEW show a special now? Like, God damn. I mean, didn't they just leave Jacksonville? They have to go back. Bro. I know, but it's hard to miss you when you don't go away. <sighs> True. Kind of like Mir Fuego on the blog. This is true. Mirror the Redeemer is anytime going. we get Fuego Fle on the vlog, it's a good thing. Right? Uh yeah, boy, <clears throat> double jointed wife, laugh out loud. <laughs> they need to get rid of uh wrestling during commercials. It's annoying. It's just a balance thing. I think you just gotta make sure nothing important's happening during that time period, is what I say. Um, so we went to that. Next up, we have the HFO. And Helico and Private Party, I was so pissed they came out to Matt Hardy's music. I <laughs> really wanted them to come out to the uh, and Helico theme. If you've never seen them dancing with uh, Private Party on like Dark, go and watch it for yourself. Freaking hilarious. Um, this match really didn't have too much to it. Tony Schiavone announces beforehand that QT Marshall says he'll apologize next week because QT's full of shit. Matt Hardy and Marco Stunt end up going towards the back. After they're trying to interfere with each other, probably for the best. Michael got tossed and lost the shoe. Yeah. Luchasaurus did hit a uh, triple stack German suplex on all of his opponents, and Luchasaurus hit a uh, choke slam tag Christian in frog splash for the victory. There really wasn't too much to this. Yeah, I feel like they kind of rushed through this. Actually, I felt like it was more a showcase for Luchasaurus for once instead of Jungle Boy. Maybe that's me. I'm going to leave it there. You got anything you'd like to add to this, Rob? Uh well, shout out to our Buffalo boy <laughs> towards the end, or right after the end. The fucking blade. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Solomonster for that. But go ahead, go ahead with it. Um, after the match, Christian's high fiving the fans, kissing babies and shit. And uh, <laughs> a masked man or a hooded man hops over the barricade, a la the Elite Hunter. That's actually who I thought it was at first. I'm like, what the hell is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's Kaz. <laughs> But it wasn't. It was the blade. Pepper Parks. <laughs> Braxton Sutter. The fucking blade. Call him that. It's a much better name. Brass knuckle shot right in the right to the jaw. I like that Christian went down from it and they're selling the brass knuckle shot like it means something. Yeah. Um, it should. Power of the punch. Regal. So he gets knocked out with those. So this is probably leading to a match or a feud coming up. 
Uh, Julia Hart with the Varsity Blondes versus Thunder Rosa. Um, this was an interesting one. Julia Hart, by the way, has been getting dogged on AEW Dark by uh, the Acclaimed. <laughs> like, they've been violating, bro. That's how bad it's been. They've been tripping. I love the Acclaim versus Varsity Blondes feud, though. It's been great. Uh, Julia Hart and Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa signed to AEW. What the fuck? Like, I couldn't take notes on this match because I was just happy that she was there. You called it, though, Rob, about the time frame of this match. You were almost, like, right on the nose with it. Didn't go more than five minutes, including entrances. This was pure dominance for Thunder Rosa. (laughs) Right? Um, Really good, man. This is, uh, yo, what? This is uh this is definitely something weird. I'm I'm just looking at Derek's comment here talking about the House of Black, aka side channel for portable. Cut it out. Mm-hmm. Uh QT is apologizing next week. I, because we're desperately running out of time. <laughs> wink wink. Guys, crushing me. But um, yeah, very interesting. I'm trying to keep up with the chat. I know I'm missing some stuff, man. Uh Julia from Paris, wee oui, wee, oui. <laughs> lol. <laughs> no Eiffel jokes tonight. <laughs> These guys. Who was Pepper Parks? Uh, Dewdrop's old name? No, Pepper Parks was the Blade beforehand. I actually know the Blade. So he's from our local area. So when the Butcher and Blade debuted, we were probably like one of the only people who knew. We were like, oh, that's that's we know those guys. We just saw them. Oh, shit, it's Andy. <laughs> yeah. So interesting. Thunder Rosa gets the win here. I missed the finish of the match. I assume she won with the Thunder, Thunder Driver, I'm guessing. I don't know, but let's talk about next week's card, Rob. We've got uh, Good versus Evil next week. Cody Rhodes probably going to be rocking all white. You remember Spy versus Spy on uh, Mad TV? Yeah. The Black Spy and the White Spy. That's not getting vibes, though. Cody Rhodes versus Malachi Black next week. Probably going to be the main event, I'm guessing. I would hope so. Uh, we have Miro versus Lee Johnson. Please pray for Big Shotty. I give that match three minutes. Christian versus The Blade. And we have an NWA Women's Title Eliminator. I'm kind of interested in that. The Bunny versus Layla Hirsch. Interesting. I can see Layla Hirsch winning that one because I want to see that dynamic of short Layla Hirsch versus Big Camille. That would be quite interesting. That And that'll probably happen on NWA television, yeah. I would guess, too. Maybe. I'm just guessing. Um, Azan talking about NWA Women's Champ coming soon. Spy versus Spy. Good call, Rob. <laughs> All right. Rob, Rob usually comes up with a lot of the uh, the classic calls for that stuff. But that's next week's card. John Moxley, I thought they said he was going to talk about Nick <laughs> Gage. Yo, they cut this up. We, we're going to hear from somebody that knows a lot about Chris Jericho and Nick Gage. Former AEW champion John Moxley. Yeah, man. Tanahashi, you a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you John and Gato, they don't be answering my calls. John Moxley's had like a heel here. He was pissed. Like, I send over my paperwork. They don't answer it. What the fuck? He's like, he ain't been sleeping, man. I know he just had a kid, but. It happens to all of us. Yeah. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. These eyes don't rest. <laughs> um, that that was it. He cuts a promo. He watched the fight, Tanahashi, and I'm glad. I want to see that match, bro. He said, ask uh, Suzuki about me. Moxie was on a tear before this in New Japan. He was. Man, murder the, grandpa laughed at your offense, boy. <laughs> yo, don't you dare. The Death Rider rides once again. I'm looking forward to it for uh we've got going on happening with that. So we get to the main event, and you see Tiff just came in here saying, Yes, yo, time out. I have to go back to the Moxley thing before. John Turner Heel tonight, as on says. Uh Malik Murray said, oh. What is Moxley smoking tonight? <laughs> he said Moxley was in drunk uncle mode. <laughs> Hold on, Queen got it right with the next comment. The one man this man fears, Yano. Face Yano, you coward. Damn, Yano. (laughs) Remember, he ruined like his G1, bro. (laughs) He was on a roll. Uh, I'm here multitasking a few things, but got you on. Thank you. But we're going to talk about the match that I should probably have you on for, but it is the no DQ Chris Jericho versus Nick F and Gage. Nick Gage recently lost the GCW world title to, uh, well, Zack Ryder. <laughs> Zack Ryder's fucking dead. His name is Matt Cardona. Uh, Matt Cardona is the new GCW champion. And let me just say this. Matt Cardona is a G, bro. Like, he got pizza cutters thrown at him, beer cans, water bottles. I haven't seen heat like that in a while. 
I'm also kind of partially with Meltzer for once. Like, you can't be throwing fucking pizza cutters at people, bro. You can't do that shit. Like, that's ridiculous. No. No, no, and no. Don't throw pizza cutters at people. And there's uh, wrestlers who wear eye patches because they got batteries thrown at their eyes and shit. Be smart. Please don't throw stuff like that at wrestlers. Um, Yeah. Oh, you wouldn't know he if you... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You throw something at me, I might grab your ass. So people better be careful, too, doing stupid shit like that. Um, let's see here. Queen, <laughs> Queen said 5,000 yen. Mm-hmm. Dude, we made history tonight. Uh, a death match on national TV. Congrats, AEW. Matt Cardona is going to clean up that GCW universe. I, I hate know. that he says that. <laughs> I guess he got AJ Gray next. We'll see. Uh, he already washed the belt. Good for Matt, man. He deserves a big title from a promotion. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. He he worked hard. Uh, yeah, Queen was there. I forgot. Right in the front row. She said she ran. Like <laughs> She was like, yo, I'm out of here. Fuck this. She, she wasn't trying to beat traffic. Uh, no, <laughs> I, I, you have to ask her. She said it was scary as AF. Uh, wait, Cardona. They threw pizza cutters at Cardona. I saw the water bottles. There was a pizza cutter thrown towards his back. I saw it in the air when um there was like they kind of showed it in slow motion on Twitter somewhere. Now, something did happen with that. That's kind of on the venue for letting that guy get in with the pizza cutter. Yeah. How funny is it as soon as he uses the pizza cutter, a Domino's pizza commercial comes <laughs> on? <laughs> Kawinky dink? I think not. Yo, the fans ran after Cardona. That's crazy. Off topic, can uh MJF and Punk in that ring? Cutting a promo. Oh, I think he was. Can you imagine them? Ooh, we. Yeah, that. Fabulous. Uh, they had to put Cardona in a cab and drive around a few times to bring <laughs> him back and hide him. <laughs> GCW fans hate Cardona. I love the stories. But this is Nick Gage. If you guys don't know, he's probably one of the top most sought after indie wrestlers, and he is known as the king of the death matches. He one time died for uh, eight minutes. And declared legally dead. And he said, let me finish the match before and after he was dead. This dude is a beast. And Jericho came out as the pain maker tonight. His New Japan persona. Uh, I know some people are fans. Some people aren't fans of it. Mom said, take me to the mall. <laughs> <laughs> I always call that attire that. You got to take me to the mall, Mom. Um, really interesting. So this is the second labor of Jericho. Early on, Jericho was cut with a pizza cutter. What the fuck, bro? You just don't cut someone's <laughs> arm like that with a pizza cutter. I don't know what's wrong with these guys. He was sitting in the tunnel like, yeah, you about to get fucked up, boy. <laughs> this is some, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Masochist shit? Like, you, yo, you can't, bro. You cannot like this. There's no way. Someone's like, all right, I'm going to cut you with the pizza cutter. <laughs> like, could you imagine sitting there planning a match? Thank you! Thank <laughs> <laughs> just uh uh i was hurt looking at this instantly uh somehow some way nick gage starts bleeding i don't know what happened to him in the early portion of the match i think jericho like punched him and there was just blood on top of his head and he had so many cuts like me and shivani were saying the exact same thing like e oh yo my man jr was not having a good time during this match oh yeah this is fun this is really fun <laughs> JR got pissed. He said Jericho's rocking that Oscar mask when he came out. Uh, do you guys think AEW will sign Gage? Nope. I don't think so either. Sick. I think that this is a, a specialty to have this kind of match, and I don't think they'll do it again. This is good for his profile, though, because he's on national television now. He's going to get a lot more bookings, more yeah. money. Yep, he can ask for way more money now. And um, <laughs> Taz, you said, by the way, that pizza was good last night. We were receiving some order of pizza. We were on his NXT stream. Make sure you check out my boy B Tazzy in the chat. Give him a subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, Matt Lopez said, I didn't see Jericho taking all four light tube shots. Jericho's a beast, bro. Thank you, Matt, for joining us. Dark Elite Eric, AW can't be all blood and guts, pal. <laughs> uh, that's why he bleed. <laughs> uh, bro, Jericho's a savage tonight. Yeah, Jericho was doing great. Probably reopened a wound, Tiff says. Um, I think Nick can just bleed on command. <laughs> Shit, I don't even I didn't even know pizza cutters were that sharp. Shit. Cut pizza to cut you. <laughs> Nick Gage does what he wants, A says. Uh Jocelyn says, when you want blood, but not that Nick Gage way. <laughs> JR wasn't ready. Matt Lopez says, no chance in hell, pal. Tanahashi is going to be at the New Japan show in the United States to face Archer. Mate? Okay. 
I'll, I'll keep it in travel. I'll keep an eye on it. Whenever it happens, I'll try to let people know. But Rob, so after the blood, Jericho goes out. He gets Floyd. Light tube of mania. I didn't think we were gonna get the light tubes. I was like, nah, they're not gonna. Nah, go I that thought they were gonna get some broken over. I didn't think he was gonna jab him up with him on his forehead. Oh no, he was tripping. I was real. not expecting that. This dude wrestled David Arquette, by the way. Like after I'm done, wrestled. He... <laughs> <laughs> he tried to kill that man, uh, dude. Why is his carotid artery? Uh, man, yeah, Matt Lopez. We were under the impression that he has to go to Japan. I believe is what was said on commentary. That's why it's on saying no. Um, six at man. JR has seen one man throw another man off occasion to a table. Then again, through the cage the hard way. He'll be fine. <laughs> I was a younger man, damn it. <laughs> Gage cutting Jericho with the pizza cutter during a domino. <laughs> Yo, you guys are tripping with that. Oh, man. All right, let's, let's end this joint. So uh, Nick Gage uses the pizza cutter on Jericho's forehead. Nick Gage sets up a pane of glass in between two steel chairs. Before he can jump, he was going to jump through the glass on a Jericho's face. What the fuck? You should not be doing stuff like that. I, dude, when you when you set up something like that, I'm just like. <laughs> no, God. No, God, please, no. No, no, no. no. You just can't do something like that. You can't. You can't. And this thing was just out of control. Like. I, I don't know, man. Jericho stops him, gives him the hurricanrana through the pane of glass. Uh, dude, I don't know. That still wasn't it. <laughs> no, that was nothing yet. So afterwards, Jericho goes for a code breaker, but Nick Gage slams him onto the glass and breaks light tubes over Jericho's back. Jericho was <laughs> cut, though. Fuck up in this match. <laughs> Superhuman has got nothing on what happened here. I would love to see Nick Gage versus Superhuman, though. That's like a I just goal. want to see that kid you beat up. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> um, so onto the, <laughs> onto the glass. Nick Gage does a pile driver on the glass and light tubes that he just broke over Jericho's back. Two count. Uh, after Nick Gage shows frustration and begins to carve Jericho's head with a light tube, like the jagged edge of a light tube. He's just stabbing him in the head. Tokyo just said it. Light tubes. Light tubes, bro. Uh, all that for a drop of blood. You've got guts, but it's looking like spaghetti. <laughs> Terrell stripping. The broken light tube to Jericho's head made me go, ah, yeah, me too, bro. Like, it's a lot when you see it. I'm never used to seeing it like on national TV. When you're watching GCW, you know what to expect. When you're watching, um, I don't know, like the deathmatch shows, like CZW and stuff, that's what you expect. Not on AEW, bro. But AEW is like a variety wrestling show. Mm -hmm. Is what I was trying to uh, tell people about this when they were booking it. So afterwards, Jericho hits Gage uh, with the the light tubes. He had like the light tubes all taped up into the stacks that they usually use at the shows. He just threw them across his yep. face, broke them over his face, head, and then uh, Judas effect. effect. <laughs> One, two, three. He gets the dub. MJF was pissed on commentary. I did like how uh, Jericho was kind of like twitching during the pin, trying to sell all the trauma he's been through. <laughs> Yeah, Jericho did a good job with that. And then MJF gets up and he does not give a fuck. He's like, you know what? I'm about to tell him what the third labor is. And I like the shot Jericho made sure they got of him holding the broken light tube in his hand. Mm -hmm. And he's in the corner, like, basically, like, he's got to defend himself from Nick Gage if he gets up again. Here comes MJF and Rob. They make their announcement for his third labor. But before they do, they did a little throwback to 2019. Little Who the thing. hell is Hoovy? <laughs> Google him. And that's what he did. He Googled him. One of the greatest luchadors of all time and top five WCW revenge characters. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the best accolade you could put like on, on the little wow. highlights. I'm just saying, you're the one who said it, not me. Yeah. I love Hoovy. The juice is the man. So Hooventude is uh, in this match, but MJF has put a stipulation on it, Rob. Jericho can only win the match after hitting a move off the top rope. What in the name of <clears throat> E-Fed booking is this shit? <laughs> what is this? So well, it's better than banning a move. This is true. So Jericho has to win with a move off the top rope. This is going to be interesting. I, I can't wait to see Juventud Guerrero, though. Like the last time when I, I – I'm trying to think of the last promotion I saw him at. I really want to say it was AAA. 
Was it triple A or CMLL? I thought it was triple A, but I, I'm trying. And the last big promotion I saw him, I believe, was TNA when they had like those uh, World Cup games and stuff like that, where he was like facing Chris Saban and shit. Really good stuff, man. He could still go. Uh, Jericho turned 50 and went through this. Jericho won't stop until he gets MJF at the end. Uh, The juice bar. (laughs) Oh, my God. Conrad, I got to send you a tweet. Uh, You're going to die laughing. Oh, boy. Let's let me see. I'm going to check this live on air. But overall thoughts on tonight's show, Rob, before we uh, ask the people. This was a, it was an easy watch. It was a fun watch. I'm going overall 8 out of 10. I I would agree. I'm giving this a thumbs up. I try not to do too many grades on the show. So it's either thumbs up or thumbs yeah, down. There, there's always different goes arounds or whatever. Yeah, you can you can say whatever you want for this. But I, I'm going to B say, plus for me. Yeah, it was a really good show. Uh, can't, can I just say that Luther was doing a good dang job on elevation versus shoddy Lee? He is very underutilized. See, no comment. <laughs> Leave no my man God. Luther alone. Tazzy said, the I fact love- that he has a job and Fuego doesn't <laughs> just sickens me. <laughs> uh, Tazzy said he loves the WCW Revenge Classic game, WWE 2K Towers Challenge booking. <laughs> Jericho wins by top rope lion salt next week. Remember, he used to hit a spinning heel kick off the top rope. He might still be able to. I think he could hit the Judas effect off there if he wanted to. It was a move off the top rope, technically. He <laughs> fell off and I game off, so that's it. Uh, you said revenge, Flair, and Jay Lethal's voice. <laughs> Woo! That's my line. Uh, Jericho could hit a frog splash. 14 out of 10, he says. 10 out of 10 from DJ. Uh, High praise. Uh, this was a fun show, Six said. Tokyo says 9. New Japan just tweeted Tanahashi versus Archer on 8-14. Hell yeah. Uh, great show, Jesus says. Ace giving it a thumbs up. Eight out of ten for Azan. Good shows. Uh, the crowd did die in some parts, yeah. Can't keep him up all night. That'll be tough. Dominoes with Matt Cardona and Nick Gage. Mm-hmm. MDK is affiliate is Domino's affiliated. If I catch you gripping a slice at Pizza Hut, I'm going to carve you up with this fucking wow. pizza cutter pussy. <laughs> that is, I swear to you, that is a quote <laughs> off of Twitter. Uh, credit to at ringside guy. Thank you, Tiff, for sending that to me. That is hilarious. That is hilarious. Uh, 8.5 out of 10 from Tazzy. Uh, bring up uh, – what was that? The Hoovy XPW promo? I, I can't remember this. I, I try to forget anything XPW, and I'm not going to front. I do, have three, I do have three DVDs in my room of XPW, but I try not to remember a lot of that stuff. <laughs> uh, you got nothing. Uh, Derek said 8 out of 10 for him. Azan said AW Dynamite. Tanahashi issued a challenge. Now Tanahashi has revealed the time and the place. The torch at the LA Coliseum. Matt Lopez says 8.5 out of 10. All right, guys, before we get ready to get out of here, you heard my thoughts last week on the CM Punk Daniel Bryan, and you heard Derek's thoughts, but we didn't hear Rob's. I think this is bullshit. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm really happy. It's, it's exciting. It's, I love the speculation. I love the suspense. Is this a big deal for the, Is this as big of a signing as people think? I'm under, the, so I put it like I'm under the impression of, the signing isn't what's going to change things. It's how you use them is what changes. It's like Hall and Nash. Hall and Nash didn't turn around WCW. It was the NWO and the storyline is what turned it around. I think I'm in the minority here, but I think that getting Daniel Bryan is a bigger deal than getting CM Punk right now because he was just in the main event of WrestleMania a few months ago. This is true. This is true. I think they both have great value, and I think Punk has done a great job of, well, people can't miss you unless you're gone. We just brought it up with Fuego and all the other stuff. If you never leave, how can someone miss you? Hey, more Fuego is a good thing, though. <laughs> this is true. And Matt Lopez has my exact same thing. I'll believe it when I see it. Because I've gotten myself hyped too many times for, well, maybe Punk will show up. There's rumors that he'll show up. Wop, wop, wop. See, I was just thinking, like, the only reason I was saying that Dave Ryan wasn't going anywhere at first. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Got to use the soundboard. My bad. Go ahead. His um, his stepfather-in-law, John Laurinaitis, was just brought back in as the head of talent relations. His wife has the deal with E and WWE and their stupid Total Bella show. He knew he was in a good spot. E. Is that going to be covered on Total Bellas? Well, Brian, I can't believe you're going to work for them. <laughs> I can't believe you're going to work for 
Jacksonville company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Matt Lopez soundboard is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I've got a I got a bunch of uh stuff in there. Um things definitely waiting to be used, but I appreciate it. Obi-Wan, if you got more of these See, sounds, send them to me. Matthew Lopez said it right there. I think Brian is a bigger deal wrestling wise. Yeah, yeah, I remember Punk's been out of the ring for seven years. But I think Punk's a bigger deal promo wise. Oh, I yeah. Think Punk, I think Punk's, Punk's going to talk him into the building. Yep. That's what he does best. And Brian and Brian's going to be the match of the night. That's the way to do it. And I think Punk can too, though. I think Punk can deliver. Neither guy is bad. Like, Punk can wrestle and Brian can cut promos pretty decent. I think Brian's gotten way better since his Ring of Honor days. Oh, yeah. So I can't and wait. I'm still of the opinion that if Daniel Bryan wants to be, he's the best wrestler in the world, bar none, when he wants to be. And I think this will give him the chance to do that. And I really, really want to uh I really want them to give him the final countdown theme. Am I wrong for that? I was listening to it today, like getting hyped. <laughs> Remember we went to that Ring of Honor show after Brian got oh, fired? Fucking Austin Aries <laughs> punk ass. Fuck Austin Aries. <laughs> he got us so good, man. Great heel. He came out with the music. Hey, yo, this man jumped out of his seat. I was like, Daniel Bryan Daniels is here. This is so cool. And then it was right after the Nexus shit where he got let go after choking out um Yeah, and he came out with the uh shit on the hoodie and all that. I was like, You bastard, you got us. He had us all up, man. It's good. Uh BJ says, What if Punk brings Brian in? So can I bring up the negatives about this too? I know a lot of people aren't gonna do this. But here's the fear thing that you have to think about. With every yin, there's a yang, and I'm a firm believer in that. And when you look at this, yes, this is great for Kenny Omega. This is great for the Bucks, Cody. I'm sure they're all going to wrestle these guys at one point or another. Cool. I'm happy for that. But what happens to Scorpio Sky, Ethan Page, the guys who were trying to get a push what happens to them? And these guys aren't going to be working every single dynamite. They're, I, I'm pretty sure their schedules are going to be pretty lax, and they can kind of do what they want. Well, you got to remember too. I, a rumored part of his deal was he was going to be able to work in Mexico, New Japan for Dan, uh, to Brian Danielson. He'll be able to work other promotions, so he probably won't be around all the time. But he'll be a contracted AEW talent. So I don't think he'll have too much of an effect on that. Punk though, I think he's going to be an exclusive. He's going to be one of the focal points because you don't just have CM Punk just to have him. Right. But I still think, and a lot of people fear the Hangman Page storyline. I don't have any fear. They're going through with this. They spent way too much time on this to not go through with it. So the Page's day will come. Trust me. I don't think Punk and uh, Brian Danielson need the title anyway right now. Oh, no. They're bigger than the belt. Ooh, would I, I like to see them? I, I would like to punk. see them get it, though. Just for historical prestige to add to the championship eventually, like, yeah, well, Punk was our champion. So was Danielson. And then you run into the, oh, you got too many former WWE champions and blah. Who cares? All right, yo, another rant. I'm sick of this shit. Fuck that shit when people say that. Oh, they're all WWE guys. I don't talk this shit on Twitter because guess what? I do it here. So if you want to do shit, subscribe. Yo, fuck anybody who says that WWE shit. Like, oh, they, they're all ex-WWE guys. Well, guess what? You put a fucking company out of business in 2002, and there weren't a lot of places for people to go. I don't hear anybody saying you stole all of Ring of Honor's guys anymore because everyone seemed to have forgotten that. People come from different places. Wrestlers are trying to make money. I try to make money. You try to make money. I don't give a fuck where you come from. <laughs> you put the ducats in the hand and we're going. That's it. Be like, keep it honest. Keep it a stack about it. Stop saying that shit. Which, Rob, this is touchscreen. <laughs> what the hell did you just do? Um, where are we looking here? Final countdown? No. Under Matthew Lopez. Am I selfish for wanting Brian to face Gresham and ROH at least once? No, you are not because I want that. Hell no. They need I think to it's gonna that. happen in New Japan, though. I, I don't care where it happens. That match needs to happen. Hundred percent for the pure title, too. Gresham doesn't even need to lose that belt. He can keep that for another year or two. Yeah, but all Brian wants to do is wrestle. I, I think would... he cares about wins and losses right now. No, yeah. He's just like, pay me and let me have fun while I'm doing this. Um Sick, but I don't know if y'all noticed this, but they seem to be teaming uh, the veterans up with younger talents in AEW as factions, kind of like mentor roles. I don't even know if these guys need a faction. I don't really think so. I say just go all in. You already got 14, 15 factions. Just give me give me some more gang warfare. <laughs> I don't I want, mind I want, it. I want Disciples of the Apocalypse versus Los Boricuas <laughs> 3.0. 
get out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> On that note, right? Uh, everybody comes from somewhere, right? Now, nah, Brian signed to AW. That Total Bella show is about to start its final <laughs> season. Uh, these people don't remember the Attitude Era, and I and I want the ROH joint too. Listen, they can go wherever they want, do whatever they want. That's the beauty of AEW, and I think that should just go for everybody. So I appreciate everyone who joined us tonight for this review. We'll be back next week. We always do the AEW Dynamite reviews. I'll try to sneak in some other stuff. I'm trying to line up things. I'm hoping we can do a SummerSlam review for you guys. I'll know more when it gets a little bit closer to that. I may even also be able to review that Rampage, the first dance. Normally, I don't do Friday reviews, but you might get one. Stay tuned for that. Hit the subscribe button. Tell a friend this week about everything pro wrestling. We're getting close to that 1.5K. Help a brother out and get us there, especially on the YouTube channel. And if you're already subscribed on the YouTube, go to the Twitch, twitch.tv slash EPW show. Help a brother out. And if you've done that, go to the link tree in the description box and click something else. Click the TikTok. Click something. Help us out. And make sure you guys check us out wherever you can. For myself, for Rob. And for everybody in the chat, thank you for joining us. We are out. Peace. And this was sponsored by Powerslam.tv and Manscaped. <laughs> Use our promo code EPW Show to save 20% and free delivery. Everyday pro wrestling, they can never be you. Listen to the podcast for the people. The best show that's here, so listen in. Let the knowledge begin. The opinions, the lesson, yes. By the fans, uh, for the fans, uh. Not many in this can understand, uh. This the podcast to show you who I am, uh. Conrad Cushman, the legend in the plans, uh. Please listen every day to the showcase. The opinions and knowledge that anyone can take. Showing you how it is done. Proving I am number one. What a legend becomes. This is now my time to show you that I am here. Uh, this podcast just to make it loud and clear. Uh, by the fans, uh, for the fans, uh, not many whose hand can understand. Uh, everything pro wrestling, they can never be you. Listen to the podcast here for the people. The best show that's here, so listen in. Let the knowledge begin. The opinion and the lesson, yes. Everyday pro wrestling, they can never be you. Listen to the podcast for the people. The best show that's here, so listen in. Let the knowledge begin. The opinions, the lesson, yes.